Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. Well, oh my goodness, once again, lots and lots of stories, lots of updates on stories we've already done. So let's just jump in with both feet and get there, shall we? Let's go. All right, so I'm going to start off with this. Now, I spoke with Royal Tea and Megan's Mole yesterday, and they asked me why my thanks button wasn't on. And I was like, what's a thanks button? Okay, so when you go into my video to watch it, if you look above now on the right, you know, where it says like, dislike, share, you'll see a button that says thanks. When you click on that button, this is the next thing you'll see. Because I do know that some people have told me that they're uncomfortable with PayPal. So this is another way to, I don't know, donate money, help support my channel, you know, all that wonderful stuff. I, as I was setting this up, I had just turned it on. I saw this. Right off the bat, somebody named Mrs. Donnelly donated $5. Mrs. Donnelly, thank you. Um, this is what I'm doing now. I'm attempting very hard. I'm working hard to build my brand. And um, so, yes, donations are welcome. I'm trying to uh, build up what I'm doing on YouTube. I've got my Twitter. I've got my Getter. I've got my Rumble. Hopefully, come October, I'll have Patreon. Uh, so I'm building my brand. I'm being honest about it. You guys, I'm completely transparent. You guys know exactly what's happening. All right, let's jump into our stories for today, shall we? Let's go. Okay, I'm backtracking. One more thing before we go into our first story. This was sent to me by one of my followers. These are 50 pence coins released in 2018 and 19 to celebrate the 60th anniversary of Paddington. The top left is Paddington at the Tower of London. Top right, Paddington at St. Paul's. Bottom left, Paddington at Buckingham Palace. And bottom right, Paddington at Paddington Station, London. Love it. All right, now let's move on. All right, starting off, do you guys remember I showed you this tweet the other day where it talks about the Diana Award and the black Caribbean pupils are three times as likely as the white peers to be permanently excluded? And I was like, why would they post that with a picture of Harry with only white students? Like that makes no sense. And they had a link and they were asking for money. They were asking for a donation. Well, that didn't take long at all. If you notice, uh, look at the bottom, that tweet was deleted. Hmm. All right, moving on. Um, anybody find it odd that the Father's Day photos came out and there's no Megan, no kids, and Harry's hanging with Nacho? Hmm. Bromance at its best. Jeez. All right, here we go. The Sugars are having a complete and utter meltdown. They're upset because the bullying investigation is finished and the palace is not relieve, releasing the results. Now, let me point something out to you guys. The palace paid privately for this investigation. The palace had said before that things within the family would be handled privately. They never said that they were going to release the results of this investigation. We all know the count between the UK and the United States now stands at like 18 or 20 staff members. That is an abnormal amount. I don't care who you are, what you say, you don't lose 18 staff members in four years unless you're doing something wrong. So a lot of us are agreeing with what Irish Lass said online that it's amusing to see how many of the sugars are screaming that you can't make up accusations without proof to back it up. Which is very interesting because the entire Oprah interview was nothing but accusations with no proof to back it up. But they're willing to believe that. <laughs> like, insane. So you get tweets like this one from this woman that says that the royal family leaked the investigation. They didn't leak it, <laughs> but they want to keep the outcome a secret because it didn't get the outcome it wanted. Totally legit and credible institution we have there. Now, this is a perfect example. She's completely ignoring the facts and running with her own narrative. 
Valentine Lowe is the one that went to the press. I showed you his interview yesterday. He's the one who went and gave the interview talking about the bullying allegations. His information came from people at the palace. Absolutely, they leaked it because they were sick of the victim narrative that Megan was pushing and their side wasn't being heard. Also notice that Megan didn't sue Valentine Lowe or the times when this story broke. And she's a very litigious person. That says a lot as well. And it was the palace that had to issue a statement that it would look into it and appoint an independent lawyer to investigate it, okay? So no, the palace didn't leak anything. Megan was found out. And as I said before, the palace said they were gonna keep things private within the family. And that's exactly what they're doing. The fact that they made changes to their HR policy shows that they found something wrong. It's also, as I said before, a sword over the head because if Harry and Meghan put a toe out of line, they'll release the stuff. And you know what the sugars will say then? It's not true, it's made up, it's this, it's that. I mean, they make excuses no matter what, so. All right. Now I'm not the only person who's thinking this way. Watch this rocked the royals, but it has now been revealed that Buckingham Palace did investigate what actually happened to Harry and Meghan yet. Yeah, so there was an official inquiry that was undertaken, funded by the Queen herself. Now, what is interesting is not so much the story, but as always with me, it's about the story behind the story. So what came out yesterday in the Sunday Times newspaper, very reputable newspaper, clearly the info was leaked to them. The story came out that the, re the results of this inquiry into Meghan's bullying of staff members at the palace is, doesn't paint a very pretty picture of her. But we're never going to see it. It's never going to be made public for a variety of reasons. Now, that is why I think this is an interesting story. Is this almost like sending a warning shot mm. to these two saying, we've got some info in our bottom drawer here that is not very pretty. Maybe we all should have a bit of a truce here. Uh, I think that's how it reads to me. Otherwise, why wouldn't you release it? The suggestion also is that those staff members who did go and provide evidence about Meghan's behaviour may get blowback. The people who are sort of crazed supporters of Meghan and Harry are very vicious. They're nasty, foul people, and they come after you if you say anything negative about either of them. So I think there was a fear that some staff members may have got blowback had this report became public. Now also bear in mind, we know Megan's very litigious. So if she has seen this report and she says, but there is nothing, ne nothing negative in any report, she'd be going after that newspaper. So watch and see if indeed she does. So this guy said exactly what I was thinking. You know, they spoke to people who had signed NDAs and if they became public, she could sue them for releasing information because they had signed a non-disclosure agreement. Now, there you go. And it, believe it or not, this also protects Megan because could you imagine when that stuff comes out, how bad it would make her look? I mean, come on, guys, let's, let's be real. So with that being said, I have to say that I agree with Royal Terrier and what Royal Terrier says, which is that Megan isn't demanding that Kensington Palace release the report. They're not burying it. They're simply not making it public. The Queen paid for this report out of her own pocket. If one single name or job title or any of the victims was leaked, we all know what would happen. Yep. I think Australia's Sky News said it best. Listen to this. Finally, just quickly, Brendan, the Duchess of Sussex, there are now claims that she bullied her staff uh, and that those claims will not be published. So uh, were you surprised to hear this, these allegations? Not really, no. I think Meghan might be the classic cry bully, you know, this person who plays the victim card and cries in front of Oprah Winfrey, but who actually is a bit of a bully behind the scenes and <laughs> treats people badly, according to these kinds of accounts. And we see that all the time these days, the weaponization of victimhood by the trans movement, other identity groups, people like Meghan Markle, who adopt this victim personality, but behind, from behind that cover, they actually launch bullying terrain against people who disagree with them or people they dislike. I think we've had enough of these woke cry bullies in public life and it's time that we had fewer of them, in my view. Well, it's funny, isn't it? Those who uh, always preach uh, tolerance are the least tolerant of anyone who disagrees with their point of view. It's hilarious. Spot on, my friends. Spot on.
All right, next up we have this story. This is more of the PR push put out by Harry and Meghan, you know, the whole victim thing, that Meghan wanted to reconcile with uh, Catherine so that the children could bond at the Jubilee. Uh-huh. Now, there is a few staff that interacted with them, and they said it was like meeting a different person. She was subdued. She was shy. She didn't really interact with people, and she didn't want to get on the wrong side of anybody. But that's a little too little too late. You know what I'm saying? That's the way she should have been in the first place. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. They honestly thought that the royal family would not be able to go on without them, and they thought they would call them back and ask them to take up royal duties, and it didn't happen, and now they're in damage control. All right, moving on. All right, now we're moving on to the fact that Harry and Meghan's children are supposed to get the title of prince and princess when Charles becomes king. That's what's supposed to happen, okay? Charles, on the other hand, could decide not to give those titles, especially since Harry and Meghan are completely out of the royal family. What's the point in having these two kids on the other side of the world calling themselves prince and princess? What would be the point? So they're talking about how ironic it's going to be because basically Harry's being thrown out of the family. Like he's got no contact with anybody. Harry is completely distanced from the head of the state. So he can't get an appointment, you know, just like now when he could jump the queue. They're saying that once the queen is gone, he's going to be in big trouble. So he's going to ask his dad to give the titles as a gift like the queen's done during her reign. And he very interestingly could say, no, I'm not going to. That wouldn't shock me at all. Now, let's not forget that during the Oprah interview, uh, Megan even said that it wasn't right to take their titles away from the children, you know, because she knew about the convention, but she claimed they wanted to change the convention for Archie, but never said who said it, in what context it was said, had no proof of anything, and they did offer him the title of Earl of Dunbarton, which uh, Harry said no to. I, I know what was going on. I think everybody knows what was going on. Megan wanted prince and princess titles for her children, just like Catherine and William's children. And then when she didn't get it, she cried foul. All right, moving on. And Andrew is apparently refusing to talk to Charles and William because Charles and William blocked his comeback at the order of the Garter. Remember, he was supposed to be there. And at the last minute, essentially, William threatened to pull out if they didn't block Andrew from attending. And Charles agreed with him. You know, Andrew is trying to rebuild his reputation. <laughs> He won't just go away quietly. Apparently, he was supposed to go to Royal Ascot as well, but he was so angry that he decided uh, there could be more friction, and so he decided to pull out of that as well. And of course, the Queen did not attend Ascot for the first time since her coronation due to her, you know, mobility issues. I mean, I don't get it. Andrew knew that he was going to have to step back from public life. He's been stripped of his military titles. In January, he's not allowed to use his HRH in an official capacity. He agreed to the multi-million pound settlement um, to bring the civil case to an end, uh, even though he said he didn't do anything. And of course, he hasn't. nothing's been shown that he did anything. But the fact is he didn't fight it in court, which I get it. He didn't want to take the attention away from the Platinum Jubilee. I get it. I do. But he's only been out of public life for six months. You can't come back. He should have vanished somewhere and, you know, you know what I mean? And tried to redeem himself, but he hasn't even done that. Terrible. Now, we do know that Andrew has been pushing his daughters to become working royals. Maybe that's going to be his way back in. Who knows? But... It's going to be a slimmed down monarchy once Charles takes over. There's no place for Andrew in that. And to find out that he was, you know, constantly with his mother every day and pushing her and trying to manipulate her just made me dislike him even more. Like, honestly. You know, he could have gone to Ascot. He chose not to. He did go to the service of Thanksgiving and walked his mother down the aisle. But to be perfectly fair, that was his dad. That wasn't just for the country. That was his dad for the service of Thanksgiving, okay? So while William may want him to just vanish, I don't think that's going to happen, to be fair.
Now, while people are talking about slimming down and making him vanish, apparently Andrew is trying to arrange a comeback, uh, but he's having a little trouble. Do I think they're going to create a new role for him? Oh, heck no. The public does, does not want him back. There's more against than pro, and they have to do what the public wants, in my opinion. So William now is working, it's being reported, on a plan to keep Andrew out of public life. Because we know that William feels that uh, Andrew's determination to hang on is dangerous for the monarchy. Which, you know what, I have to agree, I think it is. So we don't know what the plan is just yet, but apparently William is working on one. Good for him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, two more stories and then we're done with this video for today. The first story is, remember I reported already that Harry was thinking of relinquishing his title as Duke before they could strip it from him. He's like, well, never mind. I'll just give it up on my own because he knows the HRH can't be taken away. He'll still be his Royal Highness. But what I don't think he's considered is that the Queen has forbid him from using his HRH. So he can't be called his Royal Highness. He'll simply be Harry. Yeah, there's a little flaw in that plan. Also, as Harry and Meghan like to play victim all the time, look at the big bad royal family, they'll let them strip it and then cry victim. All right. Well, everybody's talking about William. You guys remember when he was on the street corner? I did a video on that. And in he was selling the big you know, magazine, and he's trying to help homelessness. And he said he did it for his 40th birthday because instead of asking other people to do work like other people did, he decided to get out there and do the work himself. Here's what he had to say. Homelessness has always stuck with me as a topic and as an issue I want to fight for. Started to kind of feel that actually this issue isn't quite as big to tackle as we think. We can fix it. And I think that's been a bit of a turning point in my head where I've seen, okay, if we really want to fix homelessness, it can be done, we do it together. Give the next generation less chance of being homeless. Now, I'm not the only one who noticed this. The news picked up on the story. Watch this. What's really interesting today and what's breaking, and I know you'll be excited about it too, is the big issue, the special edition with Prince William on the cover. Uh, he actually writes for this big issue about his experience as a vendor, uh, but it's a special edition that you can get today of the big issue celebrating Prince William. 40th birthday and really how he wants to fight homelessness as he get, gets into his 40th year, something that his mother instilled in him as a young child. I love that the lessons he learned from Diana are transferring over to his adulthood. I really do. I love the fact that he hasn't forgotten when he slept on the street for a couple of days to see what it was like to be homeless. I love the fact that he's still there. You know what I'm saying? He's in it. Fabulous. Way to go, William. FYI, William sold 32 copies in the first 45 minutes. Who's surprised? I'm not. All right, it's fin update time. It's been really, really hot here. And so my husband and I went to have some ice cream and come to find out that they had, I guess, pup, they call them pup cups. It was an ice cream cup. So we got him one. Oh my goodness, did he love it. He really did, as you can see from these photos. I couldn't video and hold the phone and I hold my own ice cream and hold his ice cream. But there you go. I think he liked it. We'll have to do that with him again. All right. So as usual, throw those comments in. I like it. I'm reading them. Make sure they're good. Don't forget to check that subscribe button. I keep hearing from people that they're unsubscribed and they keep having to resubscribe. So just double check at this time. Anyway, don't forget you can follow me on Twitter, Getter, Rumble. You can email me. To those who have donated to my coffee fund, thank you very much. To those who are going to start using the thank you button, thank you very much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.